What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. So this week uh, I am going to do a lot of just nodding my head. <laughs> Some of you probably said, well you do this, that's all you do anyway, but I'm going to be doing a lot of just uh, uh. nodding, but actually though, I will try to input a few uh, words of wisdom if I can but the reason is because uh, we're gonna talk about alcohol alcohol and, and keto. that really makes me sound like I'm yeah I just quite thought, the lush I just thought and about you are that. a complete teetotaler <laughs> apparently I just thought about that I'm sorry baby. Is that what you're I mean? the expert on drinking <laughs> yeah. on to you yeah. <laughs> that's friggin our drinking yeah. expert Sarah. that's fine uh, but anyway, um, I'll be the life of the party. It's yeah, like, you'll you'll talk about <laughs> alcohol. Yeah, it's actually pretty interesting and stuff. Uh, I just I just don't know that much about alcohol. I so let's let me I guess clarify, and, and I guess I should say this. So we realize that we have a large audience, and everybody's different. Some of you drink, some of you don't drink. Um, it's not, this is not meant to offend anybody or anything like Include that. Include or exclude, exclude anyone. Right. It's, it's just, just a it's, matter it's of life. Just, it's just information. This is right. just information. And if you're doing keto, you know, you had a life before keto and people drank before keto. You have family people, gatherings. You have weddings. Yeah. So, you so again, it's, holidays. this is just a, a bit of information. Um, uh, we were talking about this yesterday and actually Sarah did some really, uh, provide me some good information things that I didn't even know about and so we thought about thought that it would be a good topic for a keto conversation yes so, we have gotten a few questions yeah we've gotten questions and people also coming to realizations about alcohol and how it affects them when they're on keto and different ones that they've tried so right, exactly. we're gonna try we're gonna I'm going to try and discuss a couple of things first of all the types of alcohol and the best choices for a low carbohydrate lifestyle and then the second thing i'm going to talk about is the effects of alcohol meaning what it's doing in your metabolism how it affects ketosis and also some things to be aware of all right all so right that's what we're going to be talking about okay so, let's roll. so on with the liquor so the first type of liquor that i'm going to be talking about is your um, softer liquors if you will wine and also beer. Hmm, I didn't know we were going to talk about beer. Yes, and malt beverages. So, number one, we have wine. I'm a red wine drinker, but of course white is totally acceptable. Um, things to be aware of with wine is that the serving size is five ounces. So that's about half of your typical wine glass. So be aware of your serving size. Additionally, the drier the wine, the better. CJ is going to link an article that I have referenced talking about low carb alcohols. And actually the thing that you would like to look for is a wine between 13 and 15% because the higher the alcohol percentage, the lower the sugar. Because when wine is made, the fruit goes in as does the alcohol for the fermentation process. Hmm. Alcohol feeds on sugar, sugar and yeast generally. So the alcohol eats up the sugar. So the higher the alcohol content in a bottle of wine, usually the lower the sugar will be. So on the back of your wine bottle, sometimes it will be on the side label of your wine bottle, it will tell you the alcohol percentage. And then you will know per, um, pretty, pretty well if it is a drier wine or a lower sugar wine. But that is usually the standard for wine. And once So when you say sugar, you're talking about carbs? Primary I'm talking water. about, yeah, I'm talking about actual sugar, but yes, as far as carbohydrates go, for wine, you're looking about anywhere between one to three grams of carbs per five ounces. Okay. So that's five ounces of wine, and it's between one to three carbs for wine. A lot of people like to drink wine, even on a low-carb lifestyle, and it can be beneficial because wine can have some health benefits that go beyond diet um you know a lot of your european countries are promoters of wine for the resveratrol and other you know antioxidant benefits that wine is supposed to have so a lot of people like to drink wine if they're going to choose to drink alcohol so wine is an option on a low carb lifestyle as long as you remember the drier the better and to watch your serving sizes so 
Okay. That is wine. So now what about white wine? White wine is also very acceptable. Keep in mind that once again, you want dry wines. So Chardonnays, things in that family, um, even Gewürztraminers, which is a German wine. That is another thing to contemplate is that a lot of times your European wines, your French wines, Italian wines, a lot of times they are also lower in sugar because of the way they process their grapes. So you can absolutely drink white wine if that is what you prefer. I'm a red wine girl, but if you would like white wine, you just need to follow the same procedures in looking for the alcohol content in the wine and making sure that you are choosing as dry as you can. And in fact, champagne is one of the driest of your wines. So if you have the opportunity to drink champagne, congratulations to you. And it is a very go good low carb choice. All right, I've already started. Okay, what I am doing is I am reading the label of wines. And what I'm looking for is the alcohol content in the wine. I'm a red wine drinker, that is what I prefer. You can absolutely do a white wine. What I'm looking for is the alcohol volume percentage. The higher it is, the less sugar it will have. Because in the winemaking process, they put the grapes in and then they put in the alcohol and the alcohol eats the sugar and that's how you end up with the wine. And so the higher the alcohol volume, the lower the sugar will be because more of it has been eaten. So I go through and I look at the labels and find the ones that have the highest amount of alcohol volume. And usually what I have found for your dry reds is usually the highest I have found is 15%. I would imagine there might be higher than that, but I usually try and find affordable wines. And that is for five ounces. That is the serving size, which is out of half a wine glass. So as far as wine goes, something that is drier. So not a Moscato or any of those that are like the sweet wines, you know, things that say like strawberry and stuff on them are not going to be a good bet because they're going to be a lot higher in sugar. Because we have a YouTube channel. <laughs> We're working. <laughs> so this one's pretty good, although it's ten dollars. I like to find the, the least expensive one I can find. <laughs> Every child does. So it's in a different spot in pretty much every bottle. This is what happens to be here. But occasionally they'll be at the top. Sometimes like the one that I just looked at, it's in the little tiny letters I'll show you. In this one, it's in little tiny letters <laughs> on the side of the bottle. So sometimes you really have to hunt for it. French wine. Fancy. So that's a good one? Yes, it's 14.5. Yes, it's 14.5. And this one's a nice French wine. So <laughs> that's good. The most I have found is 15. As far as just your usual red wines, just on the general shelf. And as far as whites, I can go over and look at the whites. If, you know. If there are people who are would it be the same rules the like same white. rules apply for whites yeah yeah a lot of these whites especially in the chardonnay family are more around 12 percent so just a bit more sugar in the volume see you take a this is a good example so come over here and this is a moscato so if you're a wine drinker a moscato is quite sweet it's a quite sweet wine so you'll see that it only has 6.5%. So almost a third of what my dry French red is. So this is gonna have a whole lot more carbs because a lot of the residual sugar from the grape is still going to be within the wine. So you're what? So I'm getting a red. If you wanna get a white wine, probably the highest you'll be able to get as far as alcohol volume in it is a 13, so. 
but if white is what you prefer, just definitely stick with something that is like a Chardonnay. Very dry. Sometimes the Sauvignon Blanc is also very dry. And the drier it is, the less sweet it usually is, hence less sugar and fewer carbs. All right, I got Grosby Outlet. <laughs> okay. So, Grocery Outlet is the best place to find wine at a discount price. Um, I can find bottles of wine usually for under $10 that meet the parameters of what we were discussing previously. So, just an FYI. And this particular one, we have multiple grocery outlets because we live in a fairly large city. And this one has a very extensive wine section. So, shout out to Grocery Outlet. What about the whole cork thing? Okay, so I was telling CJ as we were checking out. A lot of times there is a bias for wine that does not have a cork. And actually I read very recently that there is a shortage of cork. So a lot of even very expensive wines are now putting a twist top on in order to be green and promote the conservation of cork. So just because uh, these both happen to have corks, but just because a wine has a screw off top does not make it an inferior wine, simply because there is a shortage of cork. Okay, moving on to beer. Um, a lot of people like to drink beer. I'm, I love the taste of beer, personally, myself, but I, do anything I find beer extremely bloating, so I end up feeling like the Michelin Man before I can even get any kind of effect from beer. So, especially if then there's going to be food later, then I'm just like, no. Mm -mm. But a lot of people love beer, and they don't have that effect, so more power to you. When it comes to beer, Beer is obviously made from wheat, barley, hops, things like that, so it is in the grain family. So if you have an extra sensitivity to wheat or grain, um, because there's less alcohol in beer, you only have about 5% versus 15 for wine and then 30% for your harder alcohols. Not as much as the wheat is eaten up with the alcohol in it. Mm. So you just be aware that if you are sensitive to wheat, you might react a little bit more to beers. So beers, um, lots of beer companies now are coming out with low carb with beers. Low carb beers. Yeah. This one I have is a McLobe Ultra and it's 2.6 carbs for the beer. So if you are a beer drinker, go ahead and try and look for beers that are marketed as low carb beers. Like I said, it's become quite the thing. So Most for a beer whole bottle? For an entire bottle, it okay. is 2.6 carbs. 2.6 carbs. Yeah, and it will usually say on there what it is. And it'll also say what the alcohol content is. Hmm. So, so what are we gonna do with this beer? Um, I guess we'll wait for someone to come, to over, come over and drink, drink this beer. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, so the last product in our softer alcohols, if you were, is a malt beverage product. These have also become extremely popular. And part of the popularity, I believe, is probably because um, club soda type products and sparkling waters have just run over the soda industry and you'll see companies like LaCroix and you know Talking Rain and all of these seltzer companies you see a plethora of different flavors it used to be if you wanted club soda or if you wanted sparkling water or seltzer you would start with like lemon lime or plain but now you can see there's club soda in a gazillion sure. flavors and I think that is also what has happened is is uh, malt alcohol has jumped on board so malt alcohol is similar in its brewing process to beer. But this one, this one happens to be White Claw. There are, lot, like I said, many different brands, but these usually run about two carbs for the can. And it's about 5% alcohol, very similar in alcohol content to a beer. But this will taste a lot like club soda with a zing, and it's unsweetened. So hmm. if you want something in keeping with that that's a little bit lighter with your lighter alcohols then that is another additional low carb choice and they come in lots of flavors this one happens to be ruby red grapefruit but they do come in all kinds of flavors in a lot of different brands and the amount of carbs per brand vary some of them are lower i think schmirnoff's is less than two i think it might even be one carb and then some of them are like three carbs so once again you have to check your labels just don't assume that it's going to be only two carbs because they do vary from brand to brand and this and that was per container that's per container if you were <laughs> to drink the entire container interesting okay so, 
Yeah. I did not know that. So those are your softer alcohols. Um, we're going to move into your hard alcohols or your liquors. So I will bring out my stash here. This uh, happens to be rum. That's the only one I had a large bottle of. We also have bourbon, gin, tequila, and vodka. The party is all here. If you are a scotch drinker or a regular Canadian whiskey, I don't have those, but those also qualify. So when we're talking about hard liquor, we're obviously talking about clear liquor. So most of these are clear or very slightly tinted, and these are considered hard liquor, hard alcohol, with a value of about 30% alcohol. So these are zero carb. Yes, once again, I'm going to say they are zero carb. So that means that if you have a shot of something without any mixer, you will be getting zero carbohydrates. Now we're going to discuss later what that means. But in our choices over here for the soft alcohols, they're between one to three carbs per serving. So your hard alcohols have zero carbs and that's why a lot of people will sometimes prefer to drink a hard alcohol because they are getting the zero carbs. Now, all of these are made with grain products or something of the like, but because of the fermentation process, a lot of times that will no longer bother people. But if you are particularly sensitive to the grains that they are made with, you can still get a reaction, so definitely be aware of that. So, now I'm going to get into mixers because herein lies the problem. If you were to go to a bar, say just your local pub down the street, and you ask for gin, a gin and tonic, that sounds delicious, I think I'll have one of those. Fabulous, just gin by itself. When you add tonic water, you are adding about 15 additional carbs just for the tonic water. Now they do make diet tonic waters in grocery stores, but if you're going to be in a bar or a pub, you have to be aware of your mixers. So the best idea <laughs> is to avoid mixers with sugar. If you were going to have tequila and you wanted a margarita, <laughs> the tequila by itself is absolutely no problem. Jose Cuervo could be a friend of yours but you have to watch out for that extremely sugary margarita mix. So the solution for those things that I have found, in my opinion, is to mix them with sugar-free mixers. This is just one I pulled off the shelf as an example, and this one happens to be Key Lime. This is artificially sweetened with Splenda. Um, you could also use a Zevia type soda. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen Zevia. Z people use Zevia right. before. Of course, if you're in your local pub, they're probably not going to have a Zevia, right. so you're probably going to have to ask for diet. If you find that those are extremely sweet, sometimes when I have been out at a bar and maybe I want a rum and coke or a bourbon and, and diet, I will ask for a bourbon and diet, and I will ask them to just put in a little bit of diet and a little bit of club soda. You can also ask just strictly for club soda at any bar because all of their things come out in taps and little sprayers. So you could have a little bit of diet and a little bit of soda if you don't want it to be too sweet if you find that you react to things that are extremely sweet. But if you are going to be at home or you know somewhere where you have the choice of what you're going to mix it with, a product like Key Lime, blend it up in your blender with ice and your tequila, you're going to get something reminiscent of a margarita but with none of the carbs the and carbs. the calories that you would be getting. Right. So, okay. so that is definitely a top tip is watching your mixers. And of course, you could drink these plain, you could drink them with a club soda or like I said, a diet soda. So that's completely up to you. But once again, the hard alcohols are zero carbs, but you definitely have to watch your mixers because those carbohydrates can add up very quickly, especially if you intend to have more than one alcoholic beverage. So, now that we've discussed our different types of alcohol, let's take a minute to discuss the effects of alcohol. So, your body preferentially burns sugar. We all know that. And if you've been on the, the ketogenic lifestyle for any length of time, you realize that you've worked very hard to convert your body into burning fat for fuel versus sugar. Okay, good point. Yeah. So that's awesome. But your body's favorite thing to burn, and the thing that will burn above all else, is alcohol. So if you take one of these. Is it alcohol or sugar? 
this it's alcohol i'm talking oh. about alcohol okay yes so number one the thing your body will burn number one preferentially is alcohol so if you take in an alcoholic beverage your body will screech to a halt and it will burn up the alcohol okay it'll so that working. means it'll that your ketosis will pause Okay. Your fat burning will pause and your metabolism of any other element, whether that's starch, protein, any other sugars, and it will take a break and burn this off. Hmm. So depending on who you are, depending on your metabolic health, when you have a drink, you can be kicked out of ketosis for a matter of hours, a matter of days. For some people, it can be a week or more. It all depends on your personal tolerance to alcohol and your metabolic flexibility. So just okay. be so, aware of so that. So yeah, you need to think about right. that. Right, you need to think about that. Yeah. Additionally, <laughs> if you've been around any length of time or even if you've just watched TV and you've watched a sitcom, when people drink alcohol, they crave sugar and carbs. That is what alcohol does in your body. So. You have to be extra cautious of what you're consuming with your alcohol or after you've had alcohol. So if you find that when you drink, you crave nachos and you give in to nachos, you can pretty much guarantee that those nachos are gonna go straight to your fat stores because your body's gonna be busy burning off of this and it will not be able to burn off hmm. the plate of nachos that you just decided to have with your alcohol. So definitely be aware of trying to um, be conscious of your carb choices with and or immediately following consumption of alcohol. <laughs> so the last point that I would like to talk about that is, in very, that is very important to be aware of that I have found in my own personal circumstances is not just with the keto lifestyle, but also the amount of weight that I have lost. Two things are possible with alcoholic beverages, and I'm not just talking about your hard alcohol, I'm talking about your soft alcohols as well, is that one of two things can happen. Sometimes when you drink alcohol under these circumstances, you can feel it a great deal more. So wait, 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 so you're talking about, so you've lost a lot of weight. Yes. Okay, so okay, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I understand what you're talking about. Yes. So you've lost a lot of weight and you're saying you can feel right. it more. Okay. I have been able to legally drink for more than 20 years now. <laughs> so, you know, I've had my experiences in, you know, different phases of my life having sure. alcohol. But not only the keto lifestyle, um, but also having, you know, shed a significant amount of weight, half my body weight, basically, alcohol is going to affect you differently. Okay. But oddly enough, it has been in two ways, and I'm not sure if this is similar for everyone, but I have heard that it is. So sometimes it can hit you way harder than maybe it ever did before. Um, what I have read is because um, ketosis, of course, increases your metabolism, so that also affects how you metabolize alcohol. So it can enter rapidly into your body and it can make you intoxicated maybe much quicker with a fewer amount or fewer you know drinks than maybe you did previously, previously mm -hmm. in your sugar you know carb eating days. The other thing that I have found can happen is sometimes you can have an alcoholic beverage and feel absolutely nothing, completely nothing, <laughs> zero. It's like your body took it in and just went boom and metabolized it immediately and it just flushed it right out of your body. So those are the two things that I have noticed as a difference in this lifestyle and at, this, at my current weight with the consumption of alcohol. So that's just a public service announcement to number one, watch to make sure, sure that you take it easy especially you know if you've lost some weight or if you've been practicing the ketogenic lifestyle for a while and you suddenly have an alcoholic beverage just pace yourself and see how you react just in case because you know you, nobody you wants act, to be sick <laughs> you might react differently yes you by, might react differently by being on keto or yes. by because of the weight you lost exactly yeah. yeah exactly do you have anything that you would like to say no, no, just because I don't, um, you know how much I drink. I don't drink that much at all. So, I mean, I drink an occasional rum and coke. And it's extra. And we've been together for five years, and I've seen you drink maybe one time. 
Yeah, yeah. and I can get a rum and coke or a beer, and I can. And sip you can on nurse it. it. I can nurse for it for hours. four or five hours. Yes. So <laughs> it's 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 so all this for me is not really. I mean, I just don't. And it's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking. I just never really got into it. So. And anyway. then there's me, and I come from a long line of bartenders. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So but opposites attract once again. If you have experienced you the our audience if you've experienced some I guess or learned some things since you know by drinking alcohol on keto that you want to share with the community that'd be great and Sarah is sharing her experience um, but I'm sure that some of you guys have also had other experiences as well it helps um, when we all have the collective brain yeah, to assist us so in this lifestyle i think this is a pretty short keto conversation i think it is and but once we add all the clips in who knows how long <laughs> it's going to be but uh at any rate we appreciate you being here we appreciate you uh watching we do these keto conversation segments every uh, wednesday we don't always talk about alcohol but, <laughs> Darn. <laughs> but we do talk about you know relevant keto topics uh, and from a time to time do maybe keto. we should have been drinking the alcohol while we had this keto conversation <laughs> so what do you call it so what when you're eating it's a muk like a mukbang it's a mukbang when you're yes. eating it so what is, what is I don't it know. You're it's, a, it's a drinking mukbang I, I wonder know. if they have a name for that I don't know what that's called I'm <laughs> it's sure a drinking game <laughs> I'm sure that's on YouTube so. how many times we say keto do a shot yeah, yeah. no that wouldn't be good so anyway uh, we also do new recipes on Sunday, and from time to time we do the What We Eat on Keto videos as well. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and have you as part of our keto community, and we hope that you have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace.